Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Barbecue Joe's. Today we're going to be doing some, actually we're going to be doing pizza, but not today. We're going to be doing pizza three days from now, but we got to get our dough ready. The, this dough comes from uh, Baking Steel, a guy named Andres. And uh, I've watched his video a couple times and it's kind of pretty, pretty neat. It's a 72 hour dough. Uh, basically, uh, you make it today, uh, which is uh, Thursday, and we're not going to use it till Sunday. So, it's supposed to be a legendary dough. It's supposed to be amazing. Uh, we're going to find out. It looks easy. On this video, it looks really, really good. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. Hopefully, it turns out. So we'll be right back after this. This recipe calls for 500 grams of uh, bread flour. Uh, it also says that you can probably mix it with uh, regular flour, half and half, and it'd probably be good. But he prefers the bread flour, and it kind of makes sense because it's it's a better flour for making pizzas and bread and stuff. Because it's, I think it's something to do with the gluten, not quite sure. Anyway, and it also calls for um, 16 grams of sea salt, 350 grams of uh, room temperature water, one gram, and that's it, one gram of um, yeast. Just active dry yeast. One gram, that's all. Usually we go with a lot more than that, but one gram. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to mix this up. It's a pretty easy method. I mean, the first part of it is pretty quick. Uh, and then uh, we're going to be letting this sit on the counter for one day, 24 hours, and then in the fridge for 48 hours. Uh, I know it's a long process, but if this dough turns out like it's supposed to, this is probably going to be my preferred method from now on. I'll just have to prepare myself ahead of time when I want to make pizza. So, let's get this going. So what I'm going to do, I'll put this aside real quick. And I'm going to bring the, uh, the, the uh, water and I'm going to pour in the salt. And then I'm going to stir this until it dissolves. This aside. Um, the yeast, I'm going to put the yeast and I'm going to mix it in our flour. Not much, but I'm still going to mix it in. So we'll mix it in real well. And in our water with the dissolved the salt is going in there. And we're just going to grab a spoon here. <coughs> going to mix it to make sure the uh, the, the flour is all clumpy. All you need to do is mix it until it's clumpy. And I'm going to drop this on the counter, like so. All right. So now, all I'm going to do is basically put it together, just like this. You want to make sure there's no more, more dry clumps in there. That's all it is. That's all I want to do. Is take out the dry clump. I would say two to three minutes of doing this and that's be about it. You're going to notice the dough will become stickier and stickier. And you'll notice this is a nice and sticky ball of dough. What we're going to do with that we're going to slap her back in there, and shut the cover off on it, and that's it. And this is going to be on the counter for 24 hours in the fridge for 48 hours. That's it. When it's all done, getting ready, we're going to take it out, make nice little dough balls out of it, we're going to prepare our pizza, and we're going to be cooking it out on the Weber kettle. We got the pizza attachment to it, and hopefully this one's going to be awesome. And I'm sure it's going to be awesome. The dough's going to be fine, but hopefully it turns out as good 
as Baking Steel's video. We'll find out. We'll see you in 72 hours. Alright, so our dough has been in the fridge for 48 hours. Actually it was 24 hours on the counter and 48 hours in the fridge. So according to plan, I guess, this should be perfect. Now what we have to do now is to create dough balls. And according to what I've been reading, we should have about three or four dough balls, about uh, 240 to 250 grams, which is gonna make about a 10 inch to 12 inch pizza. So, let's go, let's do it. Mm. You can smell the yeast. Oh, this is nice and cold. I gotta put this on the counter. Now don't be afraid, let's put a, a lot of flour here. Okay, so we're going to require quite a bit of flour. This is very sticky dough. Let's take that out of the way. And what we're going to do now, we're going to cut, uh, we're going to put that on. We're going to cut it about 250, 240, 250 grams, 230. Both sides. Very sticky. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it like this, put it in half, turn it 90 degrees, fold it like this in half. We've got to do this about, I don't know, 20 times. Put more flour if you need to. It's sticky. Flour sideways. Nice, like a nice baby butt right here. Nice and smooth. Once I've done this about, I don't know, anywhere between 15 and 20 times, I'm just going to grab this. We're going to close this up. Here, got a nice little dough ball. Do this dough ball. Put the flowers too much. They're going to be 280 grams. It'll be three 12 inch pizzas. <clears throat> Forget, guys, it's the first time I do this dough, so a little learning curve to this. And we're hoping it's going to turn alright. Actually, it's going to turn alright. It's going to be nice. A little bit more dough, a little bit flour, I should say. Let's close this up. Yeah, it makes more sense. Perfect. Let's get this one going. There you go. So I got three dough balls. They are anywhere between 280 and uh, 280 and 286. So we're going to be good to make three 12 inch pizzas. Now, I got to let this rest for about three or four hours. So I'm gonna put them in here. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of flour in the bottom so they don't stick around. There we go. So I'll let them rest. They're gonna probably rise, hopefully. You know, I need to rise a little bit. And uh, we'll be back in about four hours. You know what? Let me put a little bit of olive oil on top here. Just so that uh, You don't stick when I put a saran wrap on top of this, and I don't want them to stick to the saran wrap. There you go. So what we got to do is let it sit for about four hours. So that's gonna the glutens are all tense in there. It's gonna relax them. So we're gonna put a saran wrap on this. Put this on the counter. It's got to be set at room temperature, and we'll be back in four hours. So what I got going here, is basically I'm, I'm going to let those uh, lump charcoals uh, fully ignite and warm up <clears throat> and warm up the, the pizza stone and warm up the inside. We want to get that temperature as high as possible. But before 
uh, we start cooking the pizza I'm gonna put some uh, I'm gonna put some um, some maple some seasoned maple I mean this stuff has been uh, drying for over nine years and uh, we got some maple chunks we're gonna put that on the uh, on the uh, lump charcoal that's gonna help raise the temperature and it's gonna create a nice atmosphere come for a wood fired pizza so let's just warm up for maybe five ten minutes and then uh, let's put those uh, maple chunks and then we're going in we're going to be making our pizza and get it cooking so it's been uh, almost 10 minutes we're going to be putting some wood chunks and pushing this to the side a little bit That's some nice maple chunks right here stone back in place now this we're going to let that light up pretty darn good and uh, that's going to crank up the heat it's what we want so let's go make our pizza all right so let's make our pizza i'm going to put some stuff aside here Take out one dough ball, but I'm gonna. Oh, here we go. A little flour here. There you go. I'm gonna grab one ball. Ah, very, very sticky. Shut this off aside. Grab a bit of flour and we're going to be making our pizza. Ooh, sticky, sticky, sticky stuff. Now this dough has been fermented for 72 hours and uh, and I mean it's just light. It's just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful dough. So, put a little bit flour around here. I'm going to start pressing to the side. So use your fingertips, press to the side. So what you do when you're really pressing the air to the side, I've never been really really good at doing this, but getting better. And man this pizza dough is awesome. Just push to the side like that. We're going to grab our, uh, our pizza peel. I'm going to put some flour on it. Maybe a little bit of uh, corn flour. Not too much. Just enough to kind of get it. To, there we go. A little bit more flour. I want this to be really, really slippery. So let's keep going with this here. Ah, oh, this is, look at that. This, oh, it stretches like, this is nice. I'm gonna grab that. Ah, oh, look at that, just stretches. Beauty. And then my peel over here. Put that over here. Just let it stretch. Ah, oh, this is beautiful, beautiful stuff. Put that on top here. Look at that. Make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. We're going to put a little bit more flour down here. There we go. Stretch it a little bit more. bubbles in there. This is a beautiful pizza. Perfect. There you go. So a bit of sauce. This uh, is homemade uh, pizza sauce. I will uh, put the recipe in the comments below. Put that a little bit more this way. There you go. Nice and 
nice little pizza. A little personal pan pizza. There you go. I got a bit, a bit of the mozzarella. Once in a while, shake it just to make sure it's loose. There it is, nice and loose. A little bit more mozzarella. Good. Then we're gonna put some pepperoni. Sausage meat. It's already pre-cooked to a certain extent, not too uh, dry, but just barely cooked. But it's cooked. Let's shake this for the. Oops. When you shake it, I guess you gotta make sure that the stuff stays on. A little bit of onions. Nice onions. A little bit of. Sweet pepper. There you go. Now, put a little bit there. Let's just shake this up a little bit. Yep, it's still very loose, which is what we want. And put, uh, let me just dry myself up. Put a little bit of flour up here. Just to want to make sure it slides off. This is nice too. Oh, beautiful. All right. Okay, so we'll go check our uh, our fire, our kettle, see how our pizza uh, stone, how hot it is, and we're going to get this cooking. I'll bring a timer, and we'll be right back. Let's put this uh, pizza on there and try to slide it off. There you go. Nice slide. So we're going to start a timer. And in about uh, three and a half minutes, we're going to basically turn this pizza around. Let's not break the timer. It's working. Yep. All right. So we'll give it about, uh... oh look at that guys, look at that, that fire is just roaring at the back, love it, love it, love it. What's the temperature on this thing? We're at about uh, 660 maybe degrees, nice. Alright, let's flip this pizza around, oh look at that guys. Whoa. This. Wow, very nice. All right, another three and a half minutes. And that should be ready. Oh, she's cooking well, guys. She's cooking really, really well. Fire is going down a little bit. Our heat is still at 600, so we're fine. It's going to be finished cooking in about uh, three minutes or so and then we're taking her in definitely uh, gonna be tasting this all right let's check it out oh look at that guys oh nice nice and chewy look how chewy this crust is it's crunchy and chewy Let's just check, uh, see if we can check the underside. I okay. uh, just want to check. No, it looks good. All right, let's bring her in. Look at this pizza, guys. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Oh, yeah. Everything's cooked perfectly. Perfectly. Time to cut her up. Crunchy dusties. Beautiful. Good. Yeah, a little bit more. I gotta get me 
and you and I, and your pizza cutter. Holy jeez. Look at this. Look at that. Look at the underside of that. Beautiful. All right. Amazing, amazing. Love this dough. I'll be making more of this dough. For sure. This is amazing dough. Let me just recap. We made this dough on uh, Wednesday afternoon. It sat on the counter till Thursday afternoon. Then we put it in the fridge until this afternoon, or well, late, late morning, I should say. Then we let it sit for four. We made our dough balls. We worked it, made our dough balls, and uh, we let it sit there for four hours at room temperature. And then we stretch her out. We had a little problem stretching it out to 12. I mean, I could have done it. I would have waited uh, another five, 10 minutes just to lift to relax the gluten's. Don't have that time. Figured a 10 inch piece is good. So we went ahead and cooked it. We cooked it for three and a half minutes before we turned it around. And then cooked it a further three and a half minutes and I'm telling you guys, our uh, Weber grill, our pizza attachment uh, was set up to about uh, close to 700 at first, uh, went down to close uh, a little about 630 and we cooked it for seven minutes guys total. We got beautiful crust, it's amazing crust, it's uh, crispy but yet chewy. Amazing pizza guys, simple recipe, just if you have a little bit of time just do it. If you don't have time I guess you know we could always uh, probably do it for two days rather than like 48 hours rather than 72 but if you can have the, if you have the time for 72 hours just go ahead and do 72 hours it's crazy it's good uh, fermentation is amazing the taste of it is beautiful uh, what can I say it's a success all right guys like this video I mean I would say click thumbs up if you like this video sorry about that and uh, also subscribe below uh, and click on notification that little bell just click on it and you'll be notified when we do new videos guys this has been awesome I love doing pizzas I'm getting better at it uh, we're going to be doing some more pizzas in the future with different recipes but definitely this 72 hour dough it's good it's worth it alright guys until next time